spring training, uh, obviously different now that you're an analyst, not a player, but kind of, I mean, is there, is there a similar process? Is there a similar sort of, you know, warming up for the season for, for now uh, as an analyst, as opposed to being a player? Um, absolutely. You, you got to, you know, look at who's going out of the game, who's coming into the game. Um, this year, like, you know, once every four years, the World Baseball Classic's going on. Cuba just beat Japan. So uh, in Group A, they won that division. Um, and now you've got uh, injuries, let's just say Mark Teixeira. So he's got to be replaced not only on the Yankees, but on the WPC team. Um, a lot of teams have injuries. The Dodgers, they spend an awful lot of money to acquire Carl Crawford. He comes to spring training hurt. So as far as whether you're analyzing it or you're just in it, um, all of these things are kind of a factor. Where do you stand on the WBC? I think, obviously, uh, Yankee fans maybe not a huge fan of it today. Um, and, obviously, it, it's it's not a perfect system doing it uh, this early in spring training. But is is there a better way to do this? Is it is it worth the, I guess, the, the injury risk uh, for growing the global game? I think that there's always a risk. I played winter baseball three different times, and that actually helped get me to the major leagues developing a certain pitch um, to go along with the fastball. And so that actually ultimately led to Mike getting to the major leagues. The WBC, let's just take, say, Araldis Chapman with the Reds or a nice game at Suzaka, you know, guys like that, um, you know, may not have been noticed as quickly. Um, both very talented guys, but the WBC gave them, them an opportunity to gain worldwide exposure. So for me, uh, let's just take the former player, to be exposed to the, the talent that you're exposed to in the WBC is amazing. For the players, um, they're not uh, you know forced to do it, uh, especially the American-born players or the Latin players that are playing year-round anyway. So having played with a lot of the Dominicans, Venezuelans, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, they're going to play baseball year-round anyway. You don't have to ask them. They love it that much. So um, to me, it's a great opportunity, and, it, and if it can bring more fans to the game of baseball, I'm all for it. It's once every four years. I'd rather see it done in the Olympics, but uh, if the Olympics isn't going to have baseball in it, uh, just like they're trying to get rid of wrestling, um, then uh, we might as well have our own classic. I, I'm all for it. What about doing it in like November as opposed to March when everyone's... Uh, November is a, a great idea as well. The problem with that is guys that have already gone through a long season probably are grinded out mentally and they're going to be like, ah, I don't feel like doing it. Um, then you've also got, and I went on a, a tour of Japan with an all-star group after we won the World Series. Uh, you're very, very tired. And then the next year I started on the disabled list because that was just too much for my body to physically handle. So there's pros and cons to it. Um, you know, the, the biggest con would be you can never go against football. Football's number one. And, you know, you're getting into November and December, you're talking football time. People are more interested in college football and the NFL. They're, they're not going to be as inclined right now, uh, to, to want to get involved in, in, you know, putting in the time to watch the WBC. So that's, that's one of the reasons I can agree with Major League Baseball why they started it when they did. That's an interesting point. I hadn't really thought about that, but I guess that makes sense. It's you know, football is uh, football is king, and I think you know, probably even yeah. just as a as a sports broadcaster, not even just a baseball analyst. I think uh, you've probably had your your uh, your fair share of football conversations, even being a former uh, baseball player. Well, even even a former player representative, when I was with the Reds, that topic came up when you know we were we'd get all the different representatives from teams together, um, how to better baseball. A lot of things you see today uh, were borrowed from football, the way they do certain things. So, uh, you know, and I think all the sports borrow from each other. So you, you see National Hockey League took Don Fear as their head of their union. So for, for me, it's a question of, uh, you know, knowing the packing order and also knowing um, what your sport, you know, what's going to help your sport. And I think the guys that are in the WPC, they understand that you get a chance to play for your country. So you've got the pride factor, and you also have an opportunity. You know, not everybody digs spring training. Some guys want to just play games, and uh, you know, you get to kind of fine tune your game uh, against some of the best competition. If you had been given the chance to do something like this, would you have jumped at it, or would it? Would you? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I was looking to throw in 15 games in spring training, whether they were uh, a minor league setting, major league setting, World Baseball Classic. It, it wouldn't have mattered. I, I had to get myself ready for April 1st. So any 15 games I could get into, that, that's what my spring training kind of consisted of. That's interesting. Um, I, guess, I mean, would there... I guess, yeah, I guess just no, no, uh, no second thoughts. Just jump in and uh, and do it. No, there'd always be second thoughts. It depends on uh, you know where your contract status stood, um, how your body was physically, you know, after a number of years in the major leagues. Uh, now all of a sudden the, the World Baseball Classic comes up. Maybe you were you know had an injury. I had a, I had a, a knee injury one year. I had two different shoulder uh, major surgeries. So you know I might not have been able to compete. And when it came around on that fourth year. All right. Um, I, I guess, obviously, the big thing coming out of WBC so far has been Teixeira's injury, which I think yes. can kind of lead us, segue us into uh, previewing the upcoming season. Um, obviously, I mean, the Yankees are walking wounded. Uh, the AL East is vastly superior, uh, from uh, vastly improved. Uh, all the teams, you can really – legitimately look at it and say any team could finish first any team could finish last uh where do you see that uh, that all shaken out first of all i love the orioles what, what the orioles have done um and, and you know kind of solidifying themselves back as a contender the red Sox are trying to get themselves uh back together after a, a couple of I, I don't want to say off years. I think it was more of a uh, you're, you're trying to overdo it and compete with the Yankees as far as getting big name free agent guys that might not have gelled together. And then the whole Bobby Valentine experiment that failed miserably. The Tampa Bay Rays, once again, maybe the best pitching in baseball, uh, one of the best managers in baseball. Um, you know, same thing with Buck Showalter and, and Baltimore. The Yankees, you know, are going to be good. Blue Jays. I think they're they're one of the most improved teams in Major League Baseball. Um, their record may not reflect it in the spring, but once those guys and, and some of the guys that have been injured come together, um, I think the Toronto Blue Jays have as good a chance of anybody to surprise uh, Major League Baseball, especially the AL East. Uh, overall, the whole league, is there, I guess uh, we can sort of transition from football to basketball a little bit. We're coming up on March Madness, uh, and obviously everyone's talking about their sleeper picks for who's going to make a run. Is there a, is there a team in base in uh, Major League Baseball that you think might be a sleeper, maybe something that no one's uh, thinking about that's going to uh, come out and uh, have a surprising season, maybe uh, make a run to the postseason? Well, like I, I just brought up the, the Blue Jays, the Oakland Athletics every year seem to, uh, you know, withstand, you know, low salaries, um, always coming up with great pitching. Billy Bean seems to always be able to put together a, a tremendous team. Um, and now you throw the Houston Astros in there, maybe that adds a few more wins uh, to, to the good side of the docket, I think, for Oakland. Um, they have a lot of great talent. Um, you know, they have a lot of great pitching again. And I think they could shock a lot of people. I mean, that last year, once again, Seattle's pitching, Oakland's pitching. Uh, you know, now you've got the Angels in that mix uh, going out there and, and bringing in Josh Hamilton. The Rangers just picked up Derek Lowe uh, to, to add some depth to their rotation. So it's, I, I think the Oakland Athletics might be a sleeper that, that people should worry about. Oh, yeah, you know, another one, let me, let me uh, have another one, the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians have added a lot of pitching depth. They also went out. They they picked up Nick Swisher, great clubhouse guy, is a winner, and Michael Bourne. And so uh, I think the the Indians are trying to sneak in there because they've been so close. You mentioned the Astros. Are are they the worst team ever? I think they might be pretty close. I don't, I don't, you know, it's not a question of worst team ever. They they when you lower payroll that much and you trade away all your best players, um, you know. Whether they're trying to rebuild, I don't know what they're, they're really their focus is on right now, but it, it certainly isn't on trying to win a championship. And, and as much revenue that's being shared, um, I think it's sad because I always loved Houston. Um, you know, for seven and a half years that I played in the National League, uh, it was one of the greatest destinations for a visiting team. You know, they have a great fan base. A uh, great stadium, great place to play, and so for me, I'm I'm more of a romantic where I, I feel that if you own a major league team, 
you should be putting the best product on there because the fan base deserves that. And so I, you know, I'm not going to second guess a new owner, but, uh, you know, if, if you're not in it to win it, um, and you're just in it because it's a profit make it for you, then, then that hurts the game. And so hopefully in the next uh, few years, they, they put more money into the product. How does, how does a player on that team get through the season? I mean, you go in kind of knowing you're going to lose. How, I mean, what, what? No, because I played on some tough teams um, with the Brewers. We, we, I'm, I'm not going to say we didn't know we had a chance to win. Uh, we always felt we had a chance to win, but when you look at the other team, they have maybe a, a better roster. You know, it's going to be. <laughs> excuse me. Um, it, it's going to be an uphill battle, and you're going to have to play per- perfect baseball. But for these players, they're getting an opportunity, and Bo Porter getting an opportunity to manage now. Um, you're getting a major league opportunity. So whether you're the worst team or you're in the middle of the pack, it doesn't matter. It's it's there's only one level you want to play at, and this is the level. And so for all these guys, um, they're being noticed. You could always, you, you, you don't ever believe this might be your final destination as a player. Um, and just let, let's just take Trevor Bauer for, you know, example. He was first picked in the draft a couple years ago by the Diamondbacks. And now all of a sudden he's on the Cleveland Indians. You know, um, he might have thought, eh, I don't really love this organization or I'm not getting along with the organization. Um, but playing in the major leagues, other teams have the opportunity and the exposure to say, hey, we need that guy, we want that guy. And that's, uh, you know, right now with what's going through their heads. You never think you're not going to win a game. So let's talk about the TV show. Let's talk about, uh, why don't you tell me, uh, it, it's coming from a, a reality producer who has a uh, a pretty uh, pretty stellar uh, history, Deadliest Catch, Ice Road Trucker, Storage Wars. Uh, what's the show? Uh, this is called Raising the Bar, and uh, we filmed it last October at the American Royal World Series of Barbecue in Kansas City. And, uh, you know, Tom Beer is partnered with George Stickle Whiskey. And it's essentially the concept, because George Stickle Whiskey is handmade the hard way, uh, they have a, a very small uh, group of people that have been doing this for, for generations. There's just 25 people that basically make their whiskey. Um Six teams, we uh, put the task to them. They had eight hours to build the ultimate bar. And Original Productions filmed it. And uh, it's on Hulu right now, so go check it out. You can either put in uh, George Stickle Whiskey or George Stickle or Raising the Bar on Hulu and check it out. I mean, the first episode's been up there a week. It's it's getting uh, really good reviews because not just Tom Beers and George Stickle as the sponsor, but the, the people that are making the bars by hand in uh, under eight hours. It's just amazing to see what, uh, you know, American ingenuity and craftsmanship, all things that I'm jealous of because I can't personally build anything. Um, When you see these guys weld together 4,000 washers and put hydraulic arms into the bar and do all the things that went into making this bar in eight hours, um, it it, it is really amazing. That's, uh, I I want some... was in a bar and I had just grown a beard and I told the girl I was uh, one of the guys from Deadliest Catch and she believed me and so I will always uh, <laughs> I, I will I will always uh, have a uh, a place in my heart for the producer of your show uh, for that story. Um, I thanks very much. Thanks for uh, taking a few minutes and uh, good luck with the show. Good luck with the season and uh, you know we'll see uh, we'll see if your predictions come uh, come true. We'll be following the A's and the Indians and see what happens. All right. Thanks a lot, Justin. Thanks very much, Rob.